Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how you can use this investments tracker for your own use case, how it works, the setup, etc. So first of all, why should you track your investments? I would say there are a few reasons. First of all, it's really hard to manage and optimize what you cannot measure. And especially when you have multiple bank accounts, investment brokers, funds, it gets hard to know which ones are performing well, which ones are bleeding money, and how did they progress throughout time. The other reason is that investing doesn't need to take too much headspace. And when there is not a process, a single place where all of them can be summarized, then the natural consequence is that we need to carry them around in our head, which is very taxing. So using a simple tracker like this one, you can visit all of your accounts once per month, every month, and take an hour to write down all of their status, see how overall all of them are progressing, tweak them as needed, and then go about your life. That being said, the first thing you need to do is to create a copy of the template by visiting this blog article. So here in the article, there's the copy of the template, the, the link here. It also goes through more details, how to use it. So it has more details of what we're going to do afterwards. So let's go to the template and let's copy it. Let's call it my investments tracker. These are the dates. So these are going to be pivotal throughout the entire spreadsheet. This is the revenue. This is the money that comes in, the summary of all the accounts, an example account and another example account. The first thing we're going to do is just to leave out the first two dates. So we have one previous date and the current date. So since today is September 1st, I'm going to put September 1st and let's put here August 1st. And you'll see that these ones right now, the dates disappeared because they were referenced on the other sheet. So let's remove this. We can remove these ones as well. And these ones. The next step is to zero out the previous month. So let's put zero here on the top of movement, not invested and invested. So this is all zeros here. Zero, zero, zero. Now we already have two accounts that we can already use, but most likely you might have more than two accounts. So we can use this one to already put the top of movements that we have for this month. Let's say it's 100, not invested, we might have 10,000 and invested, we might have 500 and the expected yearly growth could be, let's say, 5%. And the expected yearly growth, we can keep it this way. Then for the second account, the same thing, you just put the values that are corresponding to that account. Let's say it's a bank account that you own. And you can see that on the summary, everything was updated, including the graph. Now to create a new account, we can grab this one, duplicate it. And let's say this is bank account one. Now it's the same process. You just put your values here. And then on the summary, we're going to add it here as well. So one way we can do this is that we can copy this column. We put it here. We call it bank account one. And here, instead of example account two, we're going to give it this name. And like this. And we can just propagate it. So H2, H3. So you see that the 400, this one, is here as well. But the chart was not updated. To update the chart, you double click on it and then on the setup, 
there are these values here, these data ranges. We're going to add the data range for the bank account one, which is on the D column. So I'm going to add here D, D. And now we're going to add the series bank account one. And you'll see that bank account one is already here. So it's the, the value is very low, so it's hard to see. But I think if I do this, so it's only a dot. So the reason why we only have a dot here is that this is actually referencing the wrong column. This should be G and G. So it's this column here, the total column. So now we actually have a value here, which is zero, and we didn't have anything before. And now we have a line. If you want to have a dotted line like the other ones, you can go to series, then bank account, and put the dashed line. So now we have everything set up for our accounts. The next step is that every month, let's say by the beginning of the month, you visit this sheet and you put the values of each of the accounts that you own. So let's say that another month passes and you come here, you add a new date and it actually just puts October. Let's say that you do this on the 3rd of October and you put your revenue here. We can also expand this one. And your revenue was, let's say, 1,000. And you did 40 selling apps. And by the way, you can put more things here. These are just examples. You could just put another column here. This is just a simple sum of these columns. Then you go through each of the accounts and you'll see that the date is already here. We're just going to expand this. And we're going to put our top up investment. Let's say that you've placed a hundred and not invested. You might have still 15,000 invested. You might have 600 and the rest is calculated. So here we have the total Delta and let's say that the expected growth is four. And we do the same thing for all the others. So we put some values here and our delta. And we put some more values here. Now, if you go to the summary and you put one more row, you see that all the values were updated and now we have the total for the example account which is 15,600 so that's this one and the total for this account which just so happens the same as this one so let's put a new value here so that we can actually see the difference so you'll see that this has this total and this one has this total and the chart was updated accordingly. So with this in the glass, you'll be able to see how much money you have in each of the accounts, what is your total net worth, what is the delta between this month and the previous month, and here you can see how much your expenses are eating up your net worth. So if this value is negative, it means that your costs are too high or your investments are not yielding enough value. If the value is neutral, it means that the overall investments are completely covering your costs, and if this value is positive, it means that your overall investments are not only covering your costs, but are also increasing your net worth on top. In this case, this is positive because the revenue that we have is quite low, but our investment gains are really, really high. So for example, if we put here that our revenue is, let's say, 30,000, we'll see that even though we have a high revenue, we don't have enough investment gains to cover up for our expenses. Now we're all done and the only remaining thing you need to do is to make sure to periodically visit the tracker and I would advise to do it monthly. 
So for example, you can set up a recurrent calendar event that reminds you to go through all the investments, which is actually what I do and has been working well for me for several years. And that is all. I'd love to know your thoughts about this.